Hey there, it's Tom Stone on the behalf of Indie Straw Crew Productions, and first things first, I'm gonna pause the video. So it's been a long time since I've done any commentary. I put out the first video of the scum build and asked for some feedback. And I asked around friends as well, and everybody was saying that, you know, you should probably get back to doing some commentary. But they liked all the visual stuff that I did, so I'm gonna try and do a combination of the two and uh, do things a little bit differently. This way I'll be able to go a little bit more in depth than just um, having visual aids, so to speak. So, without further ado, without further ado, I will continue the video. And uh, yeah, so the neck is now glued or the neck blank is now glued up. So the first things first, I have to make a flat surface. Now I already have a plain surface on either side, um, but I need to make it square. And once I have made that block into, once I have that block with a square edge, I go ahead and thickness it to the dimensions that I want. Um, as somebody pointed out, it is, as somebody pointed out, um, this workshop looks a lot like the Crimson Guitarist Workshop. Well, that is because it is the Crimson Guitarist Workshop. This is the last guitar that I built um, before leaving England. So, yeah, these are my final moments at Crimson that you're following. With everything down to size, it's time to start working on the fretboard. Now, I got, well, I say I got myself. Sam bought some really, really nice Pibinga from Yandels, and uh, I had to have some for myself. So I bought a few pieces for him. I bought a few pieces from him, and enough to make a few fretboards and some tops. So yeah. Um, for the scum in particular, what I'm cutting out is a fretboard. And uh, yeah, so this view bingo was cut down way before the CITES thing. It was already in our possession for a long time before the CITES stuff came up. If you're not familiar, view bingo is no longer allowed to be cut down. It has become that much endangered that... Uh, yeah, unless you have a certificate of sorts to say that it has been ethically cut, you're not allowed to really use it. I mean, you can use it, but you can't sell it abroad, so to speak. Um, but I have proof that this was cut way before those laws came into action, so everything's good on that end. Uh, yeah, once again, with this as well, I have to make a square edge to make my life a little bit easier. Because the next stage is, well, this would be the same process as if I was book matching, really. But I want to have a couple of fretboards out of this piece. So, time to cut it in two. And boy, does this new blade cut through stuff like butter. Uh, man, I missed that bandsaw. Just worked on a bandsaw today, but that really doesn't cut all this well, unfortunately. But, you know, in the hopes of my own workshop one day, uh, I might have tools just as sharp as these. I almost said just as sharp as myself, but I'm not the sharpest tool in the rack, so to speak. So, there we are. Always remember to uh, use some guiding tools so that you don't hurt yourself. Now, this would be book matching. Essentially, what I'm cutting out uh, could be used as a top, but in my case, I'm using it for the back inlay. I should have cut a much smaller slice off, but well, this does do the trick. This was still before we figured out what the body wood was, so this could have been used for back plates as well if need be. I think I did use this for back plates for another guitar somewhere. There we 
here. Slowly going. So it was that last bit that kind of catches a bit. But yeah, the main point in cutting on a bandsaw like that is to go really slowly. Um, you don't want the blade to wander. Uh, if you push too much, the blade has a tendency to kind of follow the grain. And what that means is that it would go where there's least resistance, which might not be particularly where, where you want to cut the piece. So, go slowly. You're not in a rush. And uh, this machine on the hand, this lovely felder, just planes up the wood real nice. As you can see, it takes no time at all. Uh, I'm just thicknessing my fretboard into a uh, workable size. Then it needed to be quite as chunky as it, what it was off the bandsaw. Besides, it gives me a nice clean cut. Easy enough to distinguish the figure and kind of figure out which side I want to use, no pun intended, on that. Now, first things first, before cutting the fret slots, I need a center line. And uh, the center line will allow me to figure out where exactly um, this blank should go on my uh, template thingy, jig thing. Yeah, um, so basically at Crimson there, they have a flat fret floating saw, circular saw, and it uses this little jig that has notches in it for all the fret positions, which makes things a lot faster, a lot more efficient than cutting everything by hand. That's for damn sure. So why not utilize that? Always important that when using the masking tape and super glue tick trick, um, burnish down your tape just to make sure that you have a good um, contact on each side. And it's just a matter of positioning, really. Trying to figure out which way I want the grain to go. And uh, that looked good to me. So, some super glue. Oh, that looks... Definitely just like an advertisement right there. <laughs> Tommy CA UK, CA Med Bond, super glue. That does look like an advertisement. <laughs> it's really funny. Well, I find it funny. I'm not sure if it's really funny, but I find it entertaining nonetheless. Onwards and upwards, as they say. So, this is the saw that I was talking about. Um, very important that the direction in which I'm cutting, I'm pushing the saw through, because if I were to pull it, the entire saw would jump backwards and cause some damage. Uh, that's not a good thing. By pushing the saw, I have a little bit more control. The only, only bad thing about this is the adjustment for the uh, depth is it kind of eh, at best of times. It takes a little bit of faffing about to get it exactly the way you want it to. Other than that, actually really enjoyable. I really did like this thing. I like cutting fret slots this way. I don't like cutting fret slots by hand. I know how to do it, but I don't enjoy it. As you can see, this is so much easier. Right here, just need to be very careful with your fingers that you don't chop any of them off. You kind of need those. Alrighty, hey, uh, this episode is reaching its end. Um, let me know what you thought of the commentary. Um, I'm kind of trying to do this in a very different way than what I did beforehand. Um, so let me know if you need this to be more informative, less informative, more funny, less funny, I don't know. Just let me know. <laughs> 